it's a good cam. What is going on my friends? Today, I will be cutting my car. I want you all to meet my friend Clarence. Clarence and I have been friends for two years. It's a bit of a love-hate relationship. Many, many issues uh, I have to deal with, such as this and uh, this. This is also my friend, this is Rupert. This is my newly acquired friend. Uh, also, it gives me a lot of problems. For some reason, I like the problems. I like complexity. It brings interest to my life, you know? Brings, makes it more full and wholesome. Anyway, today, um, this piece of metal here is going to get deleted because it has caused many damage, many damages to my wiring harness here. And so, um, I feel it is only appropriate for me to delete her this this, uh, this feature that Nissan has put here. I don't exactly know what purpose it serves. I know that it's very good at slicing through wiring harnesses. Oh, fuck. And bricking vehicles, so. saying before s15s have their fenders secured on the pinch hole here which as you can see mine is uh definitely seen better days so anyway just uh undo the 10 millimeter bolts and very cross the cross the Let's do, a bit of, do a bit of that action there all right So now that the guard is off, I can give you guys a better explanation of what it actually means to tuck your harness on an S15 or an S chassis. Stock, they run underneath this frame rail here, and you can probably imagine you lower the car, your wheel is going to hit it, it's going to destroy your wiring harness, and then this happens. The idea of tucking your wiring harness is that you put it above the wheel where it can't physically reach it, so that's what I did there, and it was up here for about a year and a half, as you can see the remnants of the zip ties. This section over here is what caused the tire to contact the harness thus destroying it so this bit here I'm going to have to trim that should fix that problem What the hell was that? I'll give you guys a bit of a progress update. This is extremely nerve wracking, especially doing it on a car of this kind. Um, I am by no means a panel beater or repair person at all, but basically what I'm trying to do is create a smooth edge here and get rid of the sharp edge that used to be here that actually just like the, the wiring. So this is what cut, cut it basically. This is progress so far. This obviously doesn't look pretty. Anyway, the purpose of today's video is to talk about whether it's worth buying cheap Facebook Marketplace cars. Because this, although it was cheap, isn't necessarily cheap, you know what I mean? When I got the car home, I managed to figure out what the issue was with the car. So this car has a cam, valve springs, it has extractors, full exhaust. Basically, drivetrain was in a different car, also an EF Tickford. The guy swapped it into this car and it had a J3 in it. And if you guys don't know what a J3 is, it's made by TI Performance. It's basically a cheap way of tricking the factory computer, which lives here. You can tune the factory computer if you put a J3 in. Now, sometimes these J3s, I'm not talking crap, I'm speaking purely factually. Sometimes the J3s, they're a bit fiddly, so this one prevented the car from starting. It would crank, but it would do nothing else. All we did was unplug the J3 and it started right up. 
No fucking way. No way. I'm currently not even running the J3 and the car runs pretty mint, not gonna lie. But it might not be as simple for you guys. It might be, you know, the motorbike might be locked up. It might have bad fuel in it, which means you gotta siphon it all out, which is a pain in the ass. You might have, God knows, a fried ECU. You might have a bad fuel pump number of things it'll be a headache your hair will turn gray you'll get wrinkles you got to be prepared to be a little bit more patient with a shit box like this probably my least favorite part about the car is just how dirty and manky it was when i first got it as you can see it is mainly red but it is very very faded so when i picked the car up it had every species of spider living in it it had all sorts of insect grasshoppers spiders like i said it had centipedes ants ants everywhere oh, you name it it had a, even had rat shit in the um in the boot which is absolutely disgusting in the back there is a snail trail forgot about that i don't know if snails are insects i don't think they are anyway excluding the fact that this car was a, a driving biohazard the engine bay was an absolute mess like i said before so it looks fairly decent now it's got, you know, the factory crossover pipe. It's got this. This was broken. I've had to steal this off the Sylvia because the Sylvia is currently not driving. All of this was covered in oil. The battery was covered in oil. This was covered in oil. Just everything was just filthy. The timing cover, not sealed up. Still isn't sealed up. I have to get onto that. Um, but probably when I pull the crank pulley off to uh, fix this issue. There you go. Another issue that it has. Missing bolts. Lots and lots of missing bolts. It's broken. Windscreen washer hose, who needs it? XRs were quite well equipped. They came with air conditioning. They came with heating. Uh, some were optioned with cruise control. This one has it. Just to name a few things that don't work in the car. Cruise control, doesn't work. Aircon, doesn't work. Heater, also doesn't work. The radio, doesn't work. The door locks, don't work. Be prepared to discover things about the car that you initially thought worked and would be simple fixes, but really aren't. Starts right up. Cold start as well. I was really hoping it wouldn't start. <laughs> yeah, same, same. Oh, another thing to add, the clock doesn't work. Now this car has 355,000 Ks on the body which is not uncommon for a Falcon, but considering the condition it's in, it's, it's really not that bad. It does have a, a couple of issues with the rear end, as you guys may have seen in my previous video. But, once again, teething issues. You know, you're not gonna buy the cheapest version of a car on Facebook Marketplace and then not have issues. I've seen pristine condition examples of these going for between 15 and $20,000. And I bought this car for a fraction of the price. To give you guys a taste of what the mighty Tickford has. Actually pulled and you can smell oil. Now that's a good cam. So, moral of the story, these cars are very good fun. They're inexpensive. They're cheap, so you don't have to, uh, you don't have to like care about them as much as say like an expensive car, like a Sylvia or a Skyline Chaser, whatever. I think I'm going to have more fun in this car than I will in my Sylvia. Cheap and cheap. You guys probably enjoy the videos as well because some idiots gotta buy these things, right? And try and fix them with their own money. If you're keen for this build, please stick around for more videos. This is just getting started. My ideal plan for this car is to turbo it and that will happen in the near future. If you do want to support the channel and this build, please head over to Pakin.com. You'll find this sticker. These are very popular. It'll massively, massively help me in building this car. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.